Hey everybody, what's happening? This is Shrimp Tom here, and today we're going to be going over through the Update 41 the release notes for Dungeons & Dragons Online. They're pretty long, so we're going to go through all of them and kind of give you the details and what the heck is going on, what's changing, what's new, what you need to pay attention to. So to start out, there's going to be a um, new quest. It's really fun. I played it on the Lemania server. It's got It's really cool, really well designed, cool monsters. Check it out. I think it's free to play. It is free to play as well, so it's in the harbor. It's really good. Level 15 and 32. Uh, next, we got class changes. So to start out, we got bards. Bards are being massively changed, but pretty much from the standpoint of like quality of life. Now bards are changed. So bard songs are being improved. Um, bards no longer sing their songs individually. Instead, their songs will be consolidated into a single feat, bardic inspiration. So instead of having to sing a million songs and be like, you just play one bardic inspiration. So the bardic inspiration will include all the single target bard songs. And now all of the area of effect bard songs are instead going to be in something called the ballad, which is going to pulse out from the bard in like an aura. So the bardic ballad at level one is inspire courage. And then at level three, you get bardic inspiration, which does inspire confidence. At level, I think it's like, oh yeah, inspire courage is also different. So instead of giving a morale bonus, it's a music bonus. So it's attack, damage, save versus fear and universal spell power, which is kind of cool. Inspire confidence. Used to be a confidence bonus to skills. Now it's a music bonus, so it stacks with everything, which makes an Inspire confidence quite good. Inspire Greatness has been changed. So now it gives physical resistance rating healing amp and 20 temporary hit points, which is better than it used to before. And Inspire Heroics gives a music bonus to saves, armor class, and dodge, whereas before it was just morale, which meant these saves didn't stack with greater heroism. Now it does, which is kind of cool. So the ballad um, that you get, the which is the pulsing AoE, at level 1, it, you get Inspire Courage on your Ballad. At level 9, Inspire Greatness is automatically affected, so anyone standing near the Bard is going to get attack and damage. They're also going to get physical resistance rating, healing, amplification, which is kind of cool. And then all the War Chanter stuff. Arcane Shield Chant, uh, Iron Skin Chant, Reckless Chant, Expeditious Chant, Chant of Power, which is all the, the things out of War Chanter, are not going to be a part of the Ballad and fit into the range there. Which is kind of cool, considering that Bard's now going to give 15% action boost bonus to movement speed to everyone around them. It's really cool. I'm very excited for that. As well, Inspire Excellence, the epic feat, is now going to be part of the ballad, so standing near the bard gives you plus two music bonus to each ability score. Very cool. Then you have the Bardic Inspiration, which is the single target bard song. So it's a quick bard song like doo loo loo and then it applies all of your single target buffs. The single target buffs have been changed. Pretty much all the spell singer songs are going to be single target before they were area of effect. So the duration is going to be uh, one minute plus 30 seconds per bard level. This means that at level uh, 20... That's going to be an extra, I think it's 11 minutes. And then you get increased bard song duration. So you can have these things lasting, I think it's like up to 25 minutes or something, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, abilities that ride along with the bard song, such as Frolic from Song of Freedom, have its durations changed to match your bard song. So all the bard songs are now all going to last a minimum of whatever this timer is. So there's not going to be different effects that have shorter durations or anything like you could previously get or bard songs on different timers. It's all going to be the same. Um, effects and abilities that increase your bard song duration increase. Both the base bard song effect of your bardic inspiration, as well as anything that comes with it. So, um, at bard level three, you get inspire competence. At bard level fifteen, you get inspire heroics. Spell song figure, the mana restore is now going to be the same duration. Sustaining song, the health restore is going to be the same duration, which means if you cast sustaining song, it's going to last for like twenty minutes or whatever, which is kind of cool. Once you have music of the dead, it actually applies negative healing amp, or sorry, negative healing energy. Um, to the to the undead so this is going to make it so that when you when you use sustaining song um or like you have sustaining song to negative characters they will be healed negatively as opposed to actually being healed positively and with music of the makers it does repair spell power so what this is really cool it means that bards can effectively heal everybody with their heal over time song not even to worry about if it's just being positive energy uh spell song trance gets lumped in there arcane might gets lumped in there and then the other fate singer stuff stuff gets lumped in there uh, apparently there's now a general feat available to level bards with above 15 ranks called Improved Bardic Music. So if you take this, it gives you plus one to all skills. It basically improves all your songs, plus one all skills from Inspire Greatness. Um, in plus one armor class dodge while Inspire Heroics is used. Uh, and bards at level eight are granted Soothing Song, which is a heal spell that scales off of, I'm assuming, a spell power that costs a bard song. So it'll be an extra way to use your bard song. 
Um, and then the War Chanter is being updated. The other stuff is like Fate Singer, but Fate Singer is not really that big of a deal. It basically just means that the Fate Singer abilities interact with your Bard songs to be with the new ones. So, for example, more physical resistance rating from Inspire Greatness, um, more spell power from Inspire Courage, a little bit more damage from Inspire Courage, a little bit more attack from Inspire Courage um, from all the different buffs that you get out of the uh, Fate Singer. Um, War Chanter is being changed as well to go along with this. So now um, it gives you your Inspire Greatness and uses your Charisma score for its temporary hit points, and it's doubled in epic levels. So if you have a bard that happens to have about 80 Charisma at level 30, this means every few seconds you're going to be pulsing out 160 uh, temporary hit point aura, which is really, really powerful. At level 18, uh, the Bardic, it's this is Bardic Aria. This has changed to Ballad, so hopefully that gets, that's not, doesn't make it in the game. But your, the range of your Ballad is doubled. So the aura ends up, like, gets doubled in size, which is really nice. And then finally, for the capstone, uh, the bardic capstone used to be something where when you would apply uh, Inspire Heroics on a person, it would give them a bunch of extra stats. Now, instead, you get to make a bardic scream in an area where any miss must make a fortitude saving throw versus freeze or be slowed significantly, which is kind of cool. So that's one big part of it is bards. Part number two, Eldritch Knights. Uh, Eldritch Knights are being changed. So if you have had the idea of wanting to play wizard or sorcerer or any other character that does a lot of magical damage and also weaves in melee attacks now is the time to play i start out uh, elder strike has been buffed it used to do zero to two force damage now it's one to two force damage also has no cost so it costs no spell points which is kind of cool um tier one also gives you proficiency with all simple weapons which is good for wizards who didn't get that proficiency and for every core you take you get 10 max hit points or 60 hit points for all the cores the second core uh Every core, I think, not every core, but the second core gives you some double strike and what have you, and a little bit of universal spell power. You get proficiency in light armor and martial weapons. So the proficiency with armor um, doesn't actually come out of the tree anymore. It just comes out of here. So once you hit level three, you can slap on some light armor, which is kind of cool. And then you get also proficiency with all martial weapons, which is just really, really useful for using martial weapons. Um, so you got... You also get your universal toggle, so you can have corrosive, flaming, frost, or shock damage on hit. Um, the damage scales, it's a d6 damage, and it scales with your spell power. As well, while you have one of these spell swords enabled, you also get ghost touch. So Eldritch Knights do not need to have any ghost touch items to be able to hit monsters like Reapers or Wraiths or any other monster that is incorporeal. As well, the damage that their weapon attacks now do scales off of your spell power. So it's only a d6 damage to start but it goes up every three levels, so 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18. So all you have to do is have this, and you get that extra damage on hit, which is pretty cool. Um, so it doesn't come from the later course. So if you only go this far into the tree, you still get the benefit. Um, it also adds, of course, this damage onto Eldritch Strike. Like the if you say if you have Acid active, then it adds Acid damage to your Eldritch Strike AoE. So that's kind of cool. Um, core number three, you sorry, all melee weapons are considered spellcasting implements, which means you just get extra... Um, Spell power based on the plus of your weapon. You also gain the quick draw feat, and crazy enough, minus 15% arcane spell failure from equipped armor and shields, which means you can start using heavy shields with no arcane spell failure. So that's at level six, pretty rad. For core number four, subtle force. You gain the benefits of the deflect arrow's feet, knocking aside one incoming projectile that would struck you every six seconds, which is just awesome. And minus 20% arcane spell failure. This stacks with the previous version. So now you have minus 35%, meaning you, if you happen to have heavy armor, you could wear heavy armor, although you're not currently proficient with it. Also, you get some other stuff. And your spell sword dice is now a D8 instead of a D6. So that is huge. That is a 33% increase in damage over the previous amount of damage. That's really good. You can get that one at 12. Uh, core 5 is you get extra incorporeality and deflect arrows now triggers every two seconds. Deflect arrows is super, super good. Uh, you might not notice it in some of the lower level stuff, but once you hit like level 30 quests where the monsters are almost instantly killing you with arrows when you get to the higher Reaper difficulty, oh my god, deflect arrows is nice. Also, your spells dice now becomes D10s. And then finally, the top tier, core 6, Elder, Knight, or Elder Strike grants you a power charge. Uh, so every time you use your cleave, the Elder Strike, you can have a chance, or you generate one power charge. And once you get five of them, you get powered up. So you do 10% more melee damage. The way this works is it takes your final number of melee damage. So let's say after all your multipliers and additives, you've got your strength factored in, you've got the melee damage and everything else. The melee power calculates everything, and you're going to hit the guy for 500. It then applies an additional 10% on that final damage. So it's 10% more damage after that. So you now do 550 damage. So it's 10%. Overall melee damage, you'll always see a 10% increase no matter what. So this is pretty good. Plus 4d6 spell sword dice, which is really good. I, uh, the 4d6s, it's called 4d6s, but ba it's based on the number. 
So for example, if you happen to have like this, which is D10s, then you get, it's actually like D12s or whatever. So like, or like if you have D10s, then this would give you D10s. Although you would always have D12s because it's the passive. Anyway, uh, extra force damage on hit, which gives the force spell power, some universal spell power, and then fi 15 physical resistance rating and 40 magical resistance rating. Uh, this is really cool. It's a great buff. You get an extra spell sword die, bring you up to seven. So you get seven spell sword die. Uh, intelligence, Constitution, Universal Spell Power, Double Strike, and they're now D12. So you get seven D12s every time you attack. That's pretty cool. The rest of the tree is focused mostly around like the actual meleeing stuff. A lot of stuff hasn't changed, but there's a new ability, Arcane Siphon, which uh, is just an attack that gives you Universal Spell Power for 20 seconds when you hit a guy. Really, really good for the low levels when you don't have a lot of Spell Power, and it gets still useful at higher levels to because 30 Universal Spell Power is the same as an Action Boost. Not bad to use. Um, the rest of the stuff is unchanged. At the next tier... You have the new Mystic Wards, which is for Magical Resistance Rating. You also get Action Boost Spell Power, which gives you uh, 30 Action Boost bonus to Spell Power for 20 seconds. So if you're, like, level 2 and you happen to have Action Boost Spell Power and Arcane Siphon, that's 60 extra Universal Spell Power, meaning you could probably get close to, like, 160 Spell Power if you have enough items at level 2, which is kind of crazy. The rest of the stuff is completely unchanged. Um, finally, Tier 3, you've got Arcane Barrier, which is... Is this? Yeah, it's now one rank. It used to be three ranks, which is basically once you get knocked uh, below 50% health, you get a shield, like a bubble shield that reduces damage 25%, which is kind of cool. You get Eldritch Accuracy, which lets you use either your intelligence or your charisma, based on intelligence if you're a wizard or charisma if you're a sorcerer, to hit uh, with weapons and shield bashes, not to damage. And the idea here is that you get the hit chance, so your character doesn't suffer any hit chance. You can still melee guys, but your damage, instead of coming from your intelligence or your base stats, needs to come from your magic. You have to have spell power for your spell sword dice to do a good portion of your damage, and you need to be weaving in spells to keep that damage up. So, not a bad thing. It just means that you can't focus on, like, the raw deadly stat. You need to work in also spell damage and other things. You also get this effect, Synergetic Magic here which is when you have Action Boost Spell Power active, you also get the be benefits of Action Boost Power. So you get melee and range power. This is super cool. One Action Boost, 30 Spell Power, 30 melee and range power. It's pretty awesome. Critical Mastery. I think this was there before. I don't know. Might have been. Um, yeah. Tier 4, you get a new toggle, Knight's Transformation. And this is awesome. You can get this as early as level 6. And while it's turned on, all your spells and spell-like abilities um, have their range reduced to touch range, just like Epic Defensive Fighting was. So all your spells become melee only. But while it's active, you get 30 universal spell power, 3% spell crit damage, plus 5 to hit with weapons, and 3% double strike, as well as your base attack bonus equaling your character level. For a wizard, if you take this at level 6, then your base attack bonus becomes... <coughs> Whoopsie shouldn't knock shit over your base attack bonus goes from three to six and you get plus five to hit so this one enhancement here gives you plus eight to hit three percent spell critical damage three double strike and 30 universal spell power it's really really powerful of course it reduces all your stuff to melee range but you're in melee anyway so it's fine then you have improved offhand so you can either go to shield or orbs if you go shield it gives you um fifth like Proc chance on an immediate shield bash attack with your temporary sh or equipped shield so it gives you offhand shield chance or, or sorry, and then also you get uh, temporary hit points equal to the enhancement bonus of your equip shield. This is a little weak. I don't even know why this is still in here, but it's kind of cool. It gives you like four health or something while you're leveling up every once in a while. Or you can get orb saves. Uh, then there's force point, which is the first kind of real synergy you can get between melee and range. When you cast a spell, you get force point, which gives you martial, which gives you plus one to hit and damage, which stacks up to five times. And when you hit a guy with a melee weapon, you get force point magical, which gives you plus two universal spell power, which stacks up to ten times. So if you're meleeing guys, 10 swings in a row, you get 20 spell power. And if you cast 5 spells, you get plus 5 to hit and damage. So just to recap, on the tier 4, you've got plus 5 to hit and damage here. And plus 5 to hit, as well as up to your base attack bonus. So if you're level 10, and you have this stuff in the tree, 5 to hit, you get 5 to hit from here, and 5 to hit from here. That's plus 15 to hit, and you're only on tier 4. That's really nice. That's good. Helps with the leveling process. You can also get uh, Armor and Arcana, so you gain proficiency in Meteor Armor and no longer suffer Arcane Spell Failure, which is kind of cool. And then the bread and butter, the top tier. Oh my goodness gracious. Improved Knight's Transformation. If you have Knight's Transformation active, you gain plus one competence bonus to critical multiplier with melee weapons, plus three to damage, and a mobile spell casting feat allowing you to move faster. This is actually super duper cool um, because 
it means that, you know, it's a, it, on your knight's transformation, so it has to be active, but it gives you the plus one critical multiplier with melee weapons, which is pretty much what all melees need. It gives you mobile spell casting, so you can run around in combat and cast your spells without having to jump cast all the time, and you get plus three damage with, with weapons. Why not? Then you also get knight's magic, which is pretty cool. So while you have knight's transformation active, you get plus two to your evocation DCs, conjuration DCs, or me and melee power. Or you go controller, which gives you plus two enchantment and illusion DCs and spell penetration. So are you going to be a melee who casts crowd control spells, like enchantment spells, and then get some melee power? So you walk into a group of guys, mass hold monster on yourself, like centered on yourself, so it freezes everything near you, and you start ripping through people with like a big two-hander, which is what I recommend if you want to try this out on like a sorcerer or something. Or do you want to go all offense, night transformation, get that evocation of conjuration DCs, use some of the new spells that we're going to talk about in a bit, walk into a guy, acid well, dragon breath, cleave, cleave, and take some people out. Cool ideas. Then you've got Force's Edge. So this is, when you cast a spell, you gain a plus one competence bonus to critical threat range for 12 seconds. When you make a melee attack, you gain plus 5% spell crit chance for 12 seconds. The way this works, and the way that it was essentially designed, is that you have, instead of just get plus one to critical threat range and multiplier, like most classes get at their tier five. Uh, Elder Strikes have to cast spells to make that synergy come to life. So you get the synergy from Force's Point, then you get the synergy from Force's Edge, which is to say, if you want to get that critical threat range like every other class, you got to be casting spells. But the benefit is your spells do a lot of damage because you have a lot of spell power, and you have to have a lot of spell crit because you get spell crit here, and you get spell crit over here. So when you melee attack, you get some more spell crit. So you're constantly going back and forth, casting spells and dealing damage, and it makes it a really cool and fun play style. Then you can get the Radiant Force Field spell if you want to spell like ability. And then finally, Eldritch Tempest has been buffed, which is the big AoE. It's a cleave attack, plus one or plus five W to all nearby enemies. It knocks them prone, so they land on their ass, and then when they get back up, they're slowed by 50% for six seconds. This attack also is plus 10 critical threat range and plus three critical multiplier, which means if you happen to be using something like a great axe on this character, your crit threat range, I think, becomes like like if you roll like a five or higher, you crit and it's a times like eight critical multiplier or something. Really kind of cool. I'm excited. And then, of course, it does an additional d6 force damage to all nearby characters that is affected by your spell power. So it's a big explodey damage spell. So looking forward to Elder Knight. It's going to be good. Next, we got Renegade Mastermaker. Kinetic Discharge can be used while moving. Oh, we should have been. Uh, Renegade, Renegade Mastermaker bug fix so that their constructs require the correct amount of levels. Um, protection Stance no longer drops on death. Beautiful. That was really annoying. Dual Dagger for standing Knife Fighters. Now use shorter animation for cleaves, which is awesome because animation styles can ruin desires to use cleaves. Arcane Warrior Feet buffs now last 12 seconds per stack. Uh, okay, and Arcane Warrior Magical still grants to universal spell power. So this, Arcane Warrior is still garbage. Don't take this. Um, it needs more buffs. Basically, Force's Point, which is a heroic thing that one class gets, is better than level 29 Epic Feet for Arcane Warrior. If you're playing as a Eldritch Knight, please don't take this feat. Don't take Arcane Warrior. Please take Dire Charge. They're very similar, except Dire Charge will help you win the beat the game and beat monsters, and this doesn't really. Um, War Chanter Capstone has been changed to plus two charisma instead of plus two strength. Cool. Um, Shadow Dancers Meld in Darkness now much more likely, much less likely to be interrupted. I don't know what that means. And then next we go to items. So a bunch of things have been changed. So I'm going to summarize this really quickly. All raids that are level 30, 31, or 32, which is pretty much every raid in the game uh, that says legendary on it, they have been changed now. So all of those raids will drop something called Threads of Fate when you complete them, which is like a universal raid currency. And then the Threads of Fate are going to be used to make purchases of special kinds of gear. On top of that, to make it so that you want to run older raids like Temple of the Death Worm or Fire on Thunder Peaks or Mark of Death, raids that are at the level cap, their loot has been fully revised and been updated, and it's very, very powerful. There's a lot of very good gear. On top of that, um, all of those older raids, like Fire on Thunder Peaks, Temple of the Death Worm, they now all have their own rune system. So instead of having a 20th completion, now it's just a rune where you can just buy whatever item you want once you collect enough, up enough runes. I don't know what the costs are, but I assume it's the same as the other current endgame raids. So this is this is good. This is, this is great. Um, tome drops have also been standardized for each tier of raiding, and the raids have been organized into separate tiers so now you have tier one tier two and tier three raids the tier one raids i believe are the is it oh yeah tier one raids the Philo, the just fire and thunder peaks temple of death worm and the market death so these raids they're all their raid loot was dropped down to level 26 it get they all give plus six tomes and plus five to six upgrade tomes um as well as having um 
all their gear actually updated to the to stats just below um, the stats of this raid. Um, so the way it works is the the killing time in old Baba's Hut and Curse of Strahd, those raids have not had their gear changed, but the Legendary Hound, Tempest Spine, Riding the Storm out, this, this gear has been updated to just below this level. So basically, if these items are plus 20 on their stats, then these items are going to be plus 19 on their stats, and the Defiler, Just Fire and Thunder Peaks, Temple of Deathworm items are going to be plus 18 on their stats around that level. So it's all been kind of standardized. Then you have your Tier 2, which is next tier up, the uh, Hound of Zoriat, Shroud, Tempest Spine, and Riding the Storm out. The Raid Loot has been made to t level 27. Uh, Green Steel's minimum level has been completely unchanged. Green Steel hasn't been changed. And those, all those raids can now drop plus 7 tomes and plus 6 to 7 upgrade tomes. And then finally, the current top tier raids, Killing Time, Baba's Hot, and Curse of Strahd. The loot level was dropped down by 1. None of the items are actually changed. Um, and then it awards plus 8 ability tomes, uh, which it, they always did. And then it, they, you can now also get plus 1 racial action point tomes, which is kind of cool. Um, the threads of fate that drop in between everything are going to be used for a whole bunch of different things. You'll be able to buy new filigree. You'll be able to add mythic bonuses to the crafted items that came from Killing Time, like Black Razor, Frost Razor, Frost Razor, Angdrelv, all the cool things. Um, reacquiring raid loot. So if you happen, let's just say you happen to have done Defiler of the Just, and you have the visions of perception, and you're like, okay, I want to upgrade this item i don't want to have to buy a new one or go do defile the just to get the raid again no problem get some threads of fate and you can reacquire the newer version of the item you can also buy sparks of memory with your threads of fate if you happen to be unlucky like me and you don't get it from white blue mountain there's gonna be a new unique cosmetic crown which is kind of cool there's gonna be special remnant tomes so the remnant tomes you can buy from the remnant vendor there will be tomes that cost both threads of fate and remnants and then um yeah double click on threads of fate to see while well, the whole list which is kind of cool um, other new patch stuff. Collectibles now sort themselves based on rarity, which is kind of cool. Cyberese Dragon Shards tell you what level you need to be to use them for feet respecking. Um, all these items no longer say, are you sure you want to pick up your mysterious remnants? Now you just pick them up, which is amazing. It's so much better than it used to be. Um, there's some new wintry cosmetics and daily dice. I've never seen a cosmetic in daily dice. I play this game almost every single day, and it's been two years. I have never seen a cosmetic in daily dice. I I don't even believe they exist, so this this is useless. Uh, Soul Razor got a patch fixed. Prowess got nerfed. Prowesses no longer give 75 melee power. It's now plus 50. It's still perfectly fine. You're still going to use prowess over every single filigree in the game. Um, so don't like it's just a it's just a nerf. It's no longer as good as it was, but it's still the best. So you're still going to use prowess. Enlightened Step gets some things that don't matter because monks cap out their double strike. Uh, several raid items have their proper orange borders. I didn't realize that was a problem. Festival cookies are now doing different things, which is exciting. So get ready for festival. Orbs. Orbs are coming to DDO. So before, orbs are only special random drop or like special named items. Now you can craft orbs whenever you want. They're going to be random loot. They're going to they're gonna drop. And you can have as a prefix spell power and spell focus. But also you can get insightful spell power, insightful spell focus, and spell lore in a suffix list. This means you can make an orb that is like... Um, Let's use fire, okay? You can have fire spell power and fire crit. You could have fire spell power and insightful fire spell power. Uh, you could have evocation and insightful evocation. So there's a lot of good prefix suffix combinations you can make for all levels. I'm really excited. Uh, hearts of Wood are now account bound. I didn't know they weren't. Um, bats spawn properly. Great. Oh my god, I'm getting tired. Okay, next. We have new spells. Sorcerer and Wizard. So they're level 1 spells. They're meant to be like maintenance casting spells. Firebolt, Freezing Bolt, Acid Bolt, and Electric Bolt. They all deal a D6 plus 2 damage. So you just throw out a little bolt. It does some damage. It hits the, the monster. And they have pretty much almost no cost. So what if you don't have anything else to do, you just press the bolt spell and be like, pew, 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 pew. Uh, there's also new level 9 spells. Iceberg, Acid Well, and Thunder Strike. Iceberg is a single target evo or evocation spell. You drop a huge iceberg on, on a bad guy. It does a D6 plus 27 damage per cast level which is a lot um and it's cast level 20 it costs 40 mana and has a 12 second cooldown for wizards 9 second cooldown for sorcerers then you have acid well which is an aoe acid spell it's conjuration based not evocation and it goes underneath targets does a bunch of aoe damage d6 plus 18 damage per cast level and then you have a uh, thunder strike which is a large lightning bolt that strikes a target it's single target as well it actually looks just like call lightning this one actually has a really disappointing animation. At least it did on the Mania. It's straight up like Call Lightning. Kind of sad. 
but it does just as much damage as Iceberg. So uh, Ice and Lightning are going to be your single target, with Acid and Fire definitely being your AoE kind of spells. Also, spells have been upgraded across the board. Uh, so Acid Spray, Burning Hands, and Shocking Grasp now all do a D6 plus 1, so way more damage. Um, actually, these spells used to do a D4. Now they do a D6, and now it's plus 1, so it's a huge buff. Scorch used to do a D6 per two levels. Now it's a D6 plus one per level. Snowball Swarm was the same way. So these spells got about, what, they're almost triple the damage they used to be. Uh, Acid Blast, Fireball, Lightning Bolt. Again, you're going to notice plus two, plus three, plus four. High level spells scale harder than lower level spells. Energy Burst is what it used to do a D8 per two levels. Now it's a D6 plus four per level. So this is significantly stronger. Fire Trap, I've never cast it before, but look at the damage on it. Ball Lightning, Cone of Cold, Chain, blah, blah, blah. Everything does more damage. Necrotic Ray got double. So Necrotic Ray is a great single target spell, especially for clerics. Get excited to see that. Uh, Delayed Blast, Fireball, more damage. Polar Ray, more damage. And the Meteor Swarm is added, so it does way more damage. Anyway, that is uh, pretty much all the changes to everything in DDO right now. Um, so I'm excited, looking for the big things. New spells are going to be fantastic. You'll be able to Apparently you'll be able to get the new scrolls. Um, for the bolt spells, so if you don't have them, you should be able to buy them from the vendor. If not, whoops. Um, but yeah, most of the changes are looking pretty good. The rate change is going to be very positive for the game. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Eldritch Knight is really good. I'm very much looking forward to playing around with Eldritch Knight, which is going to be fun. And uh, the new Bard stuff just means Bard's going to be easier to play, less tedious, less frustrating, um, which is always a goal. So anyways, that's all I got for today. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I am excited to play this stuff, and I will catch you guys next time. See ya.